Morning Caribbean. After a very hectic, multi-day, 43rd CARICOM Conference of Heads of Government here in Suriname, we took the time to reflect on some of the discussions that we've had to think on a course of action that would lead to further development. The newly elected Prime Minister of Grenada, Mr. Dickin Mitchell, was one of the guests of the Caribbean Connect talk show. There he emphasized the importance to reimagine the governance structure of the CARICOM as to prevent the impression that CARICOM is just a talk shop. He asserted that he is an advert believer of regionalism and that further integration is more than certainly worthwhile. I think when the heads meet, we should be meeting to make decisions and then the decisions should be implemented. Uh, too much of it really is just circular, um, sometimes bemusing, um, inconsequential conversation that isn't advancing our agenda. Um, part of it is the bureaucracy, I think, of, of CARICOM, hence the need for uh, governance improvement, but I think also part of it as heads we have to take responsibility and say that ultimately the buck stops with us and if we can't you know get action from the association that we belong to then it's difficult for us to convince our people um, that CARICOM is a serious organization that will deliver for its citizens but notwithstanding those challenges um, I certainly believe in regionalism I believe in the regional integration process and we can't abandon it you know our job really is to improve it and to try and make it try and make it better. The Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, the Honourable Gaston Brown, was also a guest at the Caribbean Connect talk show. There he spoke about the need for a new model of air and maritime transportation that rests on sustainability and reflects collective action and collective burden. It's critical that we resolve the issues of um, connectivity of both um, maritime and air transportation. Uh, you can't um, sustain an integration movement if you can't move goods and people effectively. And that has been a major problem within the integration uh, movement from since its inception. Uh, so it is one of the areas of um, discussion that will take place um, uh, during this um, conference. And uh, we're hoping that we can come up with a new model for air transportation, one in which we can um, sustain uh, uh, air transportation uh, to the extent that we have a model in which uh, member states will contribute. So you have a model of um, shared burden and shared benefit. Uh, in the past, we have seen situations in which um, some countries have been loafers, they benefit from the services, but they do not wish to contribute. You cannot um, sustain um, air transportation or even maritime transportation for that matter on that type of model in which some pay and others don't. And um, when you look at the issue of um, both uh, maritime and air transportation, uh, they cannot be sustained by any single uh, member state. So it requires a collective effort and um, it requires um, collective burden. And in as much as Barbados has indicated that they have done some work in it, um, clearly they will need to broaden it to include all of CARICOM and to provide a type of maritime transportation mechanism in which we can move um, goods and even people throughout the region. Uh, so, I mean, South America, for example, um, Guyana and um, Suriname and um, even um, Brazil, um, you know, on the border of, um, of um, Guyana, they have this aerial FM that produces a lot of food. And from the research, we can import um, foods from, um, from, from Guyana, from Suriname, and even Brazil for that matter, uh, that will be far cheaper than the foods that we are importing from North America. So in terms of keeping the price of food um, down, it is important that we establish maritime transportation and reliable and sustainable maritime transportation as soon as possible. But in terms of the type of assets, I think that we need um, combo assets. So uh, take, for instance, in terms of um, the um, air transportation, we need um, aircraft that can carry people and also carry um, uh, products. And similarly, um, with the... Um, maritime transportation, it should be um, a vessel that could carry people and to carry products. Uh, so that you don't have to rely exclusively on carrying um, individuals, but at the same time, you have a combination of both. And by so doing, we'll be able to move um, people and to move um, goods more effectively within the region and certainly to sustain our integration movement. And I think it is a critical aspect of sustaining our integration movement. <laughs>
Mary Camilla Johnson, Minister of Foreign Trade and Foreign Affairs in Jamaica, was also one of the guests at the Caribbean Connect talk show, where she responded to a series of questions related to Jamaica's advocacy of agricultural development in the past. The minister mentioned that in Jamaica, they created a linkage council to address the dependency of agricultural development and the prosperity of the tourism sector. The minister also asserted that Jamaican representatives work on the ministerial task force to support the food and security initiative led by the Guyanese president, Dr. Irfan Ali. Uh, in respect of the linkages between agriculture and tourism, what we have established in Jamaica is a quote-unquote linkages council. So it's a council that's comprised of stakeholders across private sector, in the tourism sector, as well as in the agricultural segment and the related areas, um, that is employers and employee representatives, uh, so that uh, we can more directly connect farmers with buyers being the hotels, fundamentally. Uh, so it's one about uh, supporting the farmers in terms of their capacity to produce and their capacity to produce high quality, high quantity, and the regularity of their production, because that is what hotels require in order to buy. They uh, usually import because they are able to contractually demand accountability in respect of those four elements. So what we've been trying to do in Jamaica is to assure, ensure that our farmers are able to deliver in the way and in the amount and with the regularity that's required by hotels. And by doing that, and including entrepreneurs so that you are able to bring in your your craft persons and your micro, uh, sorry, your micro businesses that produce your niche organics, etc., and um, develop their sauces and spices, that you're able to bring them all together uh, to support the tourism industry so that the tourism industry also supports your agricultural industries. That is agriculture and the agro-processing agro that comes as a result of that. Um, so that is the model that we have developed. Uh, we have an exchange that allows farmers to post their products for availability so that you reduce, you remove the middleman and reduce therefore not only the time that takes for them, to, it takes for them to be paid, but also the cost that hotels pay because you take out one layer of that process. So this is a model that we're absolutely willing to share across the piece. And uh, in fact, there may be discussions with uh, uh, one or two countries who are interested in it, but that's what we're doing in Jamaica. <laughs>
and culture are indeed indispensable to the celebrations. However, they are also indispensable to reflection, action and coming together. Sulila Blinker, poet and spoken word artist, said that as artists, they give the signs of the times. Sulila performed a inspiring spoken word piece during the opening ceremony of the 43rd CARICOM Conference of Heads of Government, in which she captivated what it means to be part of the Caribbean region. She drew inspiration from the various nations, but the message was one. We have to do it together. The first inspiration came from a poet, a Surinamese poet called Celestina Ralta. She wrote the first piece that you heard, Anomiwa Wande, that says, I'm not alone, I am surrounded by great ancestry. And um, I looked at the piece and I, I, I kind of erased myself out of the quotation. It was not about me, but everything that is in us. And I lived on St. Martin. I was raised in uh, Suriname and I lived in Europe. So I have the triangle thing. And I was thinking, if we come together, the thing what is now is, and that, I got that from Miss from Martley as well. We talking a lot, but we need to walk the talk. So that was the red line for me. And just to be honest and to look at what is really happening. And I went into our ancestry as well. Uh, there's a line in it from um, Miss Lou, is a poet from Jamaica. And it was around this time too when things was like really hard and it called Dutty Tough. So the sun a, sun a shine, but things not bright. So I worked with that. I went to a Haitian proverb as well, because for me, Haiti is seen as an underdog, but Haiti is one of the strongest and the best reflections of being Caribbean. Indeed. So I took Haiti. And of course, when we look at the Caribbean, everybody knows Bob, and he's one of my biggest inspirations. You know, and I took Bob and yeah, I just I just I just looked at, at, at the the scenery and it I played with words, but it was not really playing with words, it's really getting the message across, which is we have to do this together. Because we've been knocking for forty nine years already. Truly beautiful and inspiring. Sulila also underscored the importance of artist recognition and the development of art and culture for social change. I know we were one day. I know we were one day. When we alone to we. I know we were one day. But when that great ancestry surrounds us is key. Because it's not I alone, you see. It is the I in you, in us, we, a nation, a people, a beat, a feel, we. Bloodlines and storylines intertwined in us. With a, with a strength of culture echoing in that one of a kind collective memory that makes we. A staccato symphony reminding us that we are more than reggae, caseco, soca, and chutney. Being Caribbean is being. A people of diverse and beaming light. With in culture strength making us paradise. If only we would realize. <laughs> Dorcast is the eclectic, diverse band based here in Paramaribo, Suriname, that created the beautiful tune that you hear at the beginning of these episodes. We sat down together with Joey and Jamie from the band, who told us that they wanted to create music for the entire world. They also emphasized the need to create 
platforms in which musicians can perform their artistry. This in the region and beyond. Dorcast. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of band Dorcast is? Well, Dorcast is an uh, eclectic band. We play uh, many genres and many styles. We are a group of uh, weird people trying to make uh, world music. And we are from Suriname, proudly. Wonderful. Um, can you tell us why you insist on using your own arrangements and compositions when playing music? Well, originally we were not an original band. Uh, we didn't play uh, uh, our own compositions, we were a cover band. And uh, then the COVID season happened in uh, 2020 and because of boredom and sadness we started writing music. Uh, we performed these songs uh, online to our friends, they loved it and um, we decided to make only original music. We're lucky because uh, we have uh, 11 people in the band now and all the energies match and this creates uh, an amazing chemistry that makes original music. Wonderful. Let's talk about the uh, beautiful tune you would have created for the Good Morning Caribbean and Caribbean Connect programs. What is the inspiration behind the Indian flavor arrangement? And can you tell us a little bit about the apinti drum that you hear in the tune? Jamie knows everything about the apinti drum. Yeah, so um, well, with Indian flavor um, was the first song that I joined the band in to create. And the idea was with new band members coming in that we wanted to make a song to just feel each other's energy, to get to know each other. And you know, the reason uh, we chose for an Indian song or Indian inspired song was because the um, b uh, biggest population or one of the biggest populations in Suriname is uh, of the Indian culture. So we wanted to kind of honor that. As for the Apinti drum, um, yeah, so uh, sh uh, short and sweet is the back in the day if you would hear the apenti drum it would signify that there is news to be heard news to be told so if you hear it you know something happened and then then all the people would gather so that's also kind of the big uh, ideas behind it to have it to, you know just there's news thank you thank you a little fun fact uh, about uh, the song the Indian flavor the lyrics are actually Okans <laughs> They are a, a, a traditional uh, maroon language that we used and uh, the lyrics were co-written, well mostly written by Kenny B. Great. Collaboration of wonderful Surinamese artists. Absolutely. Um, why did you choose to uh, contribute to this initiative? Well, uh, we were honored to be asked to uh, make a tune and uh, it seemed like a difficult challenge and uh, we love challenges. <laughs> Great. I wanted to ask, what do you think CARICOM leaders should do to encourage musicians and develop music in the region a bit further? Um, well, for us, I think this would uh, definitely promote uh, collaborations between uh, different CARICOM countries to create new music genres and new music styles. Okay, speaking of that, can you tell me a little bit about the vision of Dorcast for the region in terms of music and music development? Um, yeah, um, Dorcast is a very small, wholesome band and we want to show the world that Suriname has a lot more to offer. We're not just a specific genre band, we would be considered a world band. We can play any genre, we can connect with anyone through music. So yeah, so it's not just a Caribbean thing, it's a world thing for us.
it sounds like you have experience in the world stage of music. Can you tell me, is, does, do your members have any experience in the international stage? Yeah, this is the only guy that makes uh, good money. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, a few of my songs got synced for a few American television shows and movies and stuff. Um, I, the, the, the idea is you don't need big studios, you don't need a big production team behind you. If you have the right support, if you have the right connections and the right, yeah, just internet connection, <laughs> you can find it online and you can just um, get your music out there. I made my music in my bedroom, recorded in my bathroom, and I received the news that one of my songs got picked up while I was laying in bed in my boxers. <laughs> very modest are his songs are on Netflix just to be sure and we are very proud wonderful that's a wonderful note to end on thank you so much Joey and Jamie and much success to your future endeavors thank you for this opportunity thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this special reflection episode in which we also look towards the future. We hope that you enjoyed our coverage of the 43rd CARICOM Conference of Heads of Government, but for now we say goodbye. Till next time on Good Morning Caribbean. Business Channel.